Hello, my name is Ken Small and I'm an architect with SSA Architecture in Las Vegas, Nevada. A few days ago we posted a video on um, the code requirements for designing buildings in the Las Vegas area, specifically commercial buildings. And um, today I got an uh, email from the International Code Council. It's entitled, International Code Council Releases New Framework to Address Energy Efficiency Needs Across the Entire Building Industry. So, very interesting. Um, this is uh, supposed to be a part of the uh, 2021 code, and um, Las Vegas is not in the process of um, implementing uh, the 2021 code. We're in an older code. So wherever you are when they implement the 2021 code or uh, sometimes they uh, implement portions of codes, this will be implemented in your area. And um, so a little bit of history on this. Uh, if you look at the design of commercial buildings, uh, roll back time, 15 years, uh, we were using the, uh, the large diameter fluorescent light bulbs and they were meeting the energy code requirements and we did a little bit of uh, rudimentary calculations to figure out how many would comply with the code when we were doing the ceiling layout and uh, easily met the code and then um, over time the requirements have become greater and greater and so the uh, current application is uh, LED lights typically for offices what they call troffers that means you have a two by four lay-in ceiling and the lights are two feet by four feet and they're uh, relatively shallow so mm, two three inches thick by two by four and they're all LED lights uh, if you built out an office uh, fairly recently well, let's say five years ago and then you moved out of that space and then someone came in and moved into that space and turned it into uh, a different use and then they would of necessity have to throw those old lights away and put in the new LED lights to meet the energy efficiency criteria. Um, there are some other ways around that. You cannot use the software that the government provides and show that you've attained energy efficiency in other ways to keep the old lights, but generally the engineering costs more than the savings on the lights, so most people don't do that uh, for a normal tenant improvement. So uh, what does this mean to you? Well, on the one hand, um, if you're a believer in uh, uh, global climate change being changed by the amount of power that we're using or burning fossil fuels or whatever, ever, then, then you should uh, believe in this uh, because you'll definitely be using less power to uh, heat, cool, and light your office space or your home, what have you. And then the, uh, for those of you which are more typical customers, of an architectural firm, um, your question will be about uh, first cost versus payback. And so, of course, to do this, first cost will go up. Um, for a house or, uh, say, a typical building, uh, which is a house, the majority of buildings in the United States are single family homes, uh, then uh, we've been able to build a building that's uh, net zero, which means that the, about the same amount of power comes in as goes out for since the 1970s when um, these uh, kind of questions came up initially. Uh, during the ecology movement, we knew that we could design a house that would have virtually no heat loss or gain through the building envelope and what it uh, lost or gain could be made up for by uh, ventilation, shading devices, um, ground, um, I don't know, different things that were available in the 70s. And um, so uh, we've been able to do this all along and now it looks like it's finally going to be implemented. Uh, the, the problem will be uh, for somebody who's building their forever house and they're going to build this house and stay in it for 30 years, the payback on this new system will be very good because 
Um, most of the implementation that's in the code right now has a pretty short term payback, uh, three to eight years, depending on um, what you consider to be the baseline that if it was um, what you would have done 10 years ago versus what you're doing now, the additional cost for uh, energy efficient devices is paid back in that three to five year period. Um, the reason why people don't normally voluntarily prefer to go beyond that is that um, they're concerned about the down payment on the house or what it costs to build the restaurant first cost. And um, so most people are looking at a five year window for payback. And so you'll see that on my own house, the uh, solar that I designed um, claimed about a five year payback. Now, after I've been operating it for a few years, uh, we know the payback on it will be about four and a half years, so a little bit faster. But the closer you get to uh, net zero, the harder and harder it becomes to get uh, a near-term payback. So some things that you would do for energy efficiency are really just because you want to help the environment because you'll be dead before they, they pay back. And uh, so uh, what they're saying is that they're changing the framework um, for the system to uh, bring the standard up to 40% uh, improvement on houses over where people are now. And uh, so if you were to build a, a new house under the current code now versus when the 21, 21 code comes in to play when they adopt it, which is always in Las Vegas, it's years after the actual date of the code. That just means it was the date that the code was issued for, um, ready for prime time, if you want to call it that. And um, so um, that 40% uh, improvement does not actually bring a house up to net zero. It brings it within 10% of net zero, which, as I said, the closer you get to 100%, the harder it is to justify that last payback. So um, needing that uh, final 10% makes some sense because the items that you're buying to put into your house to maintain that efficiency have to be made, built also, which also takes energy. And so when you have to go to extraordinary means to make up that last 10%, um, if you're in a relatively mild climate location with your house, then, like I said before, it may not ever pay, it, pay for itself. So what does this do to the new home buyer? Well, a couple different things. Um, we recently designed a house, which is pretty unusual for our firm. We're actually uh, almost exclusively business to business, but the client was really cool and they had some great ideas and it seemed like it would be a fun project to do, so we took it. And the project was canceled because it was too expensive. And part of the issue there is that when you compare a house you would design for yourself with a spec house that somebody built to flip, then um, that they're not going to put uh, very energy efficient products into it because they're just going to comply with the basic building code. So in that case of that project, we had uh, air conditioning systems in the house that uh, had individual room thermostats so that comfort was much greater uh, for the people that would have been in the house. And then the systems that we were using were um, twice as energy efficient or maybe three times as energy efficient as what would be found in a spec house. So uh, in your typical house that you might buy off the used market, say three to five years old, your energy efficiency on your HVAC system is probably going to be somewhere between uh, 12 and 14. It could be a lot less, but um, if you buy something that's uh, 15, 16 and run it for three years, um, the efficiency of it starts to reduce. So you could be all the way up to 16. Uh, these systems that we had put into this house design were running in the high 20s to the low 30s, so 28, 29, 30, 35, something like that. And uh, so that made the house not competitive as against the uh, spec house market. And so uh, the client made a decision to buy a spec house and not build the one that we had designed. And uh, I understand uh, because if you don't have the down payment or the upfront money to do the house, um, then you gotta do something else. 
and um, I think the client actually had the money there, but they just felt that it was a investment decision, and so that's the decision they made. So if you're a young family and you want to buy a new house, um, the barrier to entry is now raised. And um, so you're going to be buying a house that will be much more energy efficient, and therefore your mortgage payments will be higher and your down payment will be higher. But over the term of the existence of the house, uh, for instance, the house I live in now, it's uh, 50 years old, it's had quite a few remodelings, uh, not all at my hands, but by previous owners. And um, so uh, that house, had it been uh, built as a net zero house in the 70s, and these codes would have been the codes at that time, then all these many months of two, three, four, five hundred dollar electric bills that the occupants of the house have uh, encountered would not have existed. So they would have paid a higher mortgage, but uh, over time the payback overall uh, would be very good because if you uh, uh, install insulation that has a five year payback, then it's uh, paid off after five years and then after that as long as you're there the it's a, a premium on your investment so just like you put some money in the bank and you got some interest on it uh, this actually would probably pay you a lot more than current interest rates on the bank but you'd have to be there out past the five years and so the uh, second third fourth owner would get the benefit of that so uh, I came in on the house uh, 26, 27 years ago. It was very badly insulated, virtually no insulation at all in the attic. And we brought it uh, some great improvements right away. As soon as I moved into it, uh, we began improving the thermal efficiency of the windows and the insulation to the extent that we could. But it's nowhere near uh, even current modern day standards. It's just that's all that's uh, feasible to really do to an old house unless you're just going to rip the stuffings out of it and start all over again. And um, so uh, let's talk about commercial buildings because that's uh, essentially what we do 90%, 95% of the work that SSA Architecture does is commercial buildings. So what does this mean to you? Well, um, not as good because um, the average commercial tenant improvement lease is five years. And so now you're going to be putting in more energy efficient uh, lighting or air conditioning systems or what have you that may or may not pay back in that five years. They, they could, but more than likely what happens is when you move out, that's added value you've left for the landlord. Certainly if it's a rooftop air conditioning unit or something like that, the next tenant will use it. But if it's lighting then as these standards are constantly a moving target, the next tenant to move in may just rip out those lights anyway.